Guys, what are you doing in my living room? So I've got my trusty reading journal, which I've kept track of all the books that I've read this month in. Can we admire my October spread for a moment? Thank you. Thank you. Stop. Thank you. I don't have all of them physically. I listen to some of them. I borrowed library copies for others. Starting off with The Idea of You. The Idea of You is now one of my favorite romances, if not my favorite romance novel I've ever read. I first heard of it because in a movie was made on Amazon with Anne Hathaway. I think she even produced it too, but she definitely, she played the main like female character and the main male character was Nicholas Galaxy and I think his name is, but he was in the movie Purple Hearts. That's a Netflix romance movie that I also really liked. So I watched The Idea of You in the summer with some of my friends and I loved it. And I liked it so much that I picked up the book, started reading it, and the writing style was immediately like, you know what you can just tell? Even from the very first page, it wasn't necessarily what was going on, it's just how it was being told. I was like, oh, I'm gonna like this. I'm going to like this book. And then I ended up like putting it down and picking it up, being very wishy-washy with it for a couple of months, because I think I started it literally like all the way in May. And then I only started seriously like consistently reading it in September and once I got into it I got super into it like I don't even know how I was like putting it down picking it up I guess I was just like not looking for romance at those points but then when I was I was just obsessed. So The Idea of You is an age gap romance but it's older girl younger guy which I've never read it's it's a mighty age gap it's not it's not a little one it's like 20 years. He's 20 and she's 40 or something very close to those ages. It's also kind of like not confirmed to be a Harry Styles fan fiction, but it's very clearly like some One Direction fan fiction. In my opinion, the author doesn't say that it is. So the idea of you is about our main character, Selene, who is an art dealer. And she has a daughter who is like 12 years old and the daughter loves this band called August Moon. And they have tickets to go and see them, like a meet and greet. And at that meet and greet, Selene meets the, I don't want to call him the main singer, but like the, the Harry of the band. Um, and his name is Hayes. And they like immediately kind of have a little bit of a spark. It's just a good time. It starts out really fun, kind of just like a surface level sort of lusty connection. But the tension and the chemistry is so great that I didn't even care. And also just the writing. I love Robin Lee's prose. But... As it goes on, the connection just becomes like very realistic and very deep and you just see that these people are perfect for each other and I loved all the places that they went because he's in the band, they travel like all over the world. So every chapter is a different country or place or city that they're in and just like the shenanigans that they get up to and what life would be like if you were in the situation where you were dating somebody who was in a mega famous boy band, like how does the fame of your partner affect your relationship and how does that put a strain on it? And also being a mother and navigating that of like, my daughter's obsessed with this band. This is literally her favorite member and he's my boyfriend. You know, a lot of people don't like this book <laughs> and I understand it. Not sure what my opinion would be about this if it was like a real life situation, but fiction is meant to be fun. I loved it. I honestly think it's my favorite book that I read all year. I know, I know. It was just fantastic. I rewatched the movie after I read the book and I loved the movie the first time, but after reading the book, I kind of hated the movie afterwards because the book is just so good. If you like romance stories, let me not even say that you'll love this because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who don't like this book, but God, do I love it. Like, I feel like if you if you get it, you just get it. I'm so sad that Robin Lee, the author, has only published this book. Like, this is the only book she's ever written. And it just feels crazy to me that this is your debut novel. This beautiful, magical piece of artwork that has changed my life, literally altered my brain chemistry. And you're just going to disappear like that. Okay. Okay. So Robin Lee, I'm personally begging you. I've already, like, commented on her Goodreads page. I was like, please, for the love of God write another book about anything. I don't care what, just please, please. I also felt like this book was just really realistic in the sorts of situations that they came across with having like a famous person who's also very young and then a regular person who is a little bit older and a mother. What sort of situations would a relationship, a pairing like that, bring about? I feel like a lot of romance novels, they put two unlikely characters or sometimes likely characters together in a relationship but it's not like realistic sort of problems that they go through or it's just like misunderstanding after misunderstanding silly trope but this one there was not a single trope 
in here that felt like it was just being used as a trope like everything that happened made sense and I thought that the problems were very realistic and I thought the couple was very mature even Hayes who is supposed to be a 20 year old which I've never met a 20 year old like him in my opinion my humble heart as a lover of romance and fiction i just found this to be a perfect book i loved this book i'll totally be doing a reread uh very soon it's one of those books that as soon as i closed it i wanted to immediately go back to page one and start it again which i did i started it again and then i, I put stop myself but it was just that good after the idea of you um actually i don't know if this is perfectly in order because i think i was reading this before too i was reading the intuitionist throughout september and then i finished it not all of September, I started it at the end of September, I finished it in October. I had to read that for a class that I ended up dropping. I'm in my final semester of college and um, I realized I didn't need to be taking that class so I dropped it. But um, The Intuitionist is by Colson Whitehead. It's about our main character Lila May, who is an elevator inspector, inspector in this fictional kind, unnamed city that kind of reminds me of New York City. And in this world, elevators and like being an elevator inspector is a super important job. It's like the equivalent of the respect you get for being a doctor. It's like, oh, you're an elevator inspector. Like, it's cool. But there's like a lot of politics around elevators. She's the first black female elevator inspector to, I believe, graduate from her college. And also the first black female to work in the elevator inspector industry. This story has a bit of a mystery plot in it and it's also very like much literary fiction. I'm not gonna lie, I really didn't love this story. I really wanted to like it. The ideas were very original and interesting. I've never been a mystery enjoyer. I, I don't think I've ever read a mystery novel that I actually like. My professor said it, she chose this book because the mystery was supposed to like be fun for us and I go to a primarily like STEM focused school and she thought the elevators would also be enjoyable to us because like we're STEM majors so we should like that stuff um no didn't work for me the elevator thing didn't work for me but I did like Colson Whitehead's prose most of the time when I was able to understand it it did go over my head a little bit it was not light reading to say the least something positive did come out of this though after not totally loving it but appreciating the intuitionist for what it was i picked up a nonfiction book by colton whitehead called the colossus of new york and i've been reading that slowly and i'm really enjoying that so i'm thinking that maybe he's one of those authors that i don't really love their fiction but i really enjoy their nonfiction. that's kind of how i feel about john green so that was the intuitionist i also read carmilla this month which i actually have in this beautiful amazing stunning copy um, this is not mine, I'm borrowing this, but it is just so gorgeous. I read it because it was so gorgeous. I mean, it speaks for itself, that beautiful cover. I ended up reading this in one setting, in like three hours. It's a very short book, it's like 150 pages. Carmilla is the story that inspired Dracula. She is the vampire in Western literature. It follows uh, our main character whose name I forgot, but she's a girl in her, I want to say late teens. She's very lonely. She lives with her parent, her father, and like some attendants in the house that they live in. They are like in a castle and she's supposed to be visited by one of her father's friend's daughters and then that daughter mysteriously dies and so she's very sad about that. In the middle of the night, a few days later, this girl shows up at her house with like a broken down carriage. So the girl's mother is also there and the mother's like, hey, can my daughter stay with you guys for a little while? And they're like, yeah, sure, leave her here. And um, let's just say that daughter is uh, our vampire friend. And so Carmilla ends up staying at this castle with our main character and her father and weird things start to happen. I already talked this to death in another video. I think it's the what I've been reading lately video that I posted like two weeks ago if you want to hear more about it, but I thought this was really good. I was surprised that I liked it so much and that it was so easy to read. I have this like understanding, misconception is a better word, of classics as being something taking a lot of brain power and effort and that uh, um, isn't going to be leisurely reading, but this was very leisurely. If you're looking for a short classic novel that might help you get over a fear of classics if you are like me and had a fear of classics, um, this is a really good one. So I also read The Haunting of Hill House this month. I picked it up because, you know, October, 
and also really like this but this was not a surprise because I did read You've Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson in January and I really loved that and I had just been waiting for a good time to read this this year. I had plans to read it at some point and it just felt like the time during October and this was really good. I loved the Netflix show. Very different. I did not expect this to be so different. The Netflix show was definitely more loosely inspired by this book than an actual adaptation of it because it is just like very different. If you're not familiar with the story, The Haunting of Hill House is about a doctor named Montague who is studying the supernatural and specifically like haunted houses. He goes to Hill House and invites a few people to join him as like assistants, specifically people who have had some sort of supernatural occurrence happen in their life in the past. So our main character, Eleanor, ends up being one of these people and she's also joined by Theodora. And then also the nephew of the house owner has to join them just because the house owner wants it to be that way. So basically these three assistants and the doctor live in the house. They're planning to stay there for a summer and just like track any sort of supernatural instances or occurrences that happen in the house and you just follow what happens in there. It definitely was spooky. I don't read much horror at all so this might not be super spooky to other people but for me it was spooky. I don't think it's like super crazy. If you're like kind of a loony like me and don't read a lot of like horror books I think this one's pretty safe and I love Shirley Jackson's writing style. I did like We Have Always Lived in the Castle more than this one but this was still very good. So I also listened to a very random book Counting the Cost by Jill Duggar. So I grew up watching a lot of um, um, reality TLC shows with my mom as a kid and one of my favorites if not my favorite was 19 Kids and Counting. It followed the Duggar family which was this Christian family that was part of this particular church slash denomination that I can't remember the name of and one of their core beliefs in this church is that children are a blessing and there should be no birth control or form of contraception so as a result of this they had 19 children and I loved watching this show because they just seemed like they were having so much fun. Like there was kids in it, so it was more entertaining to me as a child than any of the other shows my mom watched on TLC because those were like grown ups, you know? So I loved seeing the kids. I loved seeing all the shenanigans they got up to and like their house was huge and they would cook meals together and it just seemed like a very wholesome, fun time, you know? But in recent years, some scandals have happened with the family. I'm sure you can find them very easily. I don't really want to get into it on this channel, but you can find them if you want to. And basically Jill Duggar, which is I think the second oldest girl in the family, wrote a book just kind of detailing her experiences of being a child on television from a very young age and then growing up with the show and having the show like follow her through her adulthood. Her whole like courtship and marriage was on TV. I think one of her births was on TV, just like being followed by camera crew for like your whole life and just all the behind the scene things of the not fun parts. Jill ended up leaving that church. She is still a Christian, but it was also about her journey of like finding her own faith and her own belief system and her relationship with her family. And I found it very interesting, very illuminating. It was super cool in the beginning of the book to just like read about like the behind the scenes because as a kid, I was so jealous. Like I wanted to be part of the Duggar family. I was like, I want to go and have 18 brothers and sisters to like have fun with every single night we have like a party that looks like they're living the life so it was really fun in the beginning of the book to like kind of relive some of those experiences like so many of the scenes that I remember watching as a kid were like coming back to me and I watched like some reels of them on YouTube and we watched old episodes which was really fun and then the later parts of the books got into like the darker heavier topics of like the things that happened with it within her family and like the scandals um which was just very interesting and illuminating it's weird to talk about like people's autobiographies and like rate it or um say that it was good or bad but I I found it easy to pick up I listened to it on audiobook and it was read by Jill yeah I am glad that I read that one so moving on I also read Persuasion this month which I've talked about in several videos now but I'm just so proud of myself for reading this book sorry for the change phone died nothing new but I've never understood Jane Austen novels I've tried to read them several times and always get bored and feel like they're too old timey language for me to really understand it or have a good time reading it so I've always just like avoided them and I really tried my best with this one. I talked about it more also in that um, what I've been reading lately video and I persevered and I finished it and I actually really liked this. It took like a hundred pages for me to get used to the writing style and then I ended up just really loving the book. And then I watched the newest movie adaptation and loved that too. So Persuasion is ultimately a second chance romance. It's about Anne Elliot 
and Frederick Wentworth. Anne and Frederick were together when they were younger, but Frederick was not rich enough to marry somebody of Anne's class, and so she allowed one of her friends to persuade her into breaking off the relationship and then Frederick goes to the Navy, ends up making a great name for himself, becoming rich, comes back like seven or eight years later, and now he's looking for a wife. And Anne is still around, she's never married, she's heartbroken about the end of the relationship, really deeply regrets it, and they get a second chance to see each other, and it just kind of follows their relationship, um, or lack thereof. It's just full of angst and pining. The back of this, which I love this edition, the back of this says, you pierce my soul, I am half agony, half hope. There's just some really great writing in here and really great quotes. Such a great ending. I love the ending so much. Once you get used to the language, if you're not someone who reads a lot of classics, it is a very good time. And if you're still scared, I recommend watching the movie with Dakota Johnson that's on Netflix. Watch that. If you like the story, then maybe you would like the book. So last but not least, my second favorite book that I read this month is my number one has to be The Idea of You, but number two, is Golden Sun. I loved this book so so much. I read the first Red Rising book in March and I didn't love that book but then I started the second book anyways just because I didn't really have anything else to read at that time. Got like 50 pages in, didn't really care, still wasn't loving it so then I put it down. This month for some reason every time I go to the library I see this book and it's just such a nice looking book. Every time I pass it I can't help but picking it up so I picked it up and I was like okay it's fall, it's October, this is like the perfect time for reading like high fantasy novels and I was between reading this and um the third book in the Witcher series because I'm on the Blood of Elves in the Witcher and I did like the first two books um of the Witcher which I also read last year. I don't know, sometimes just weird things happen, strikes of fate because I fully intended on reading the Blood of Elves before I read this but then I picked this one up first and then I, I started reading it and I became obsessed. And I've started the third book in the series, Morning Star, last week, and I'm loving that too. And this has now become like one of my favorite series ever. So Red Rising is about a fictional world in which humans have colonized the entire solar system and they, the human race has been like genetically altered so that different social classes of people are different colors. So there's red people at the bottom and there's gold people on top. In between there's like a hierarchy of different colors. So our main character's name is Darrow and he is a red. And so as a red, Darrow has been living in enslavement, unawares, for his entire life. His people have been enslaved for generations and they did not know that they were slaves. They've been mining in underground, harvesting this material for generations, um, thinking that they were terraforming Mars and all the other planets in the solar system so that the rest of society could come join them. And they find out that the terraforming is complete the rest of society has been in the solar system and the reds were just left underground never to be updated never told that the terraforming was complete and they're just being used as slave labor and society has advanced so much without them so basically darrow finds out about this so some other things happen that basically lead to darrow having to infiltrate the gold level of society and help to overthrow this government and free his people i don't really want to say too much more than that all of that that i just told you is on the back of the book so not really spoilers. When I read the first book I was disappointed by it because it was really hyped up in whatever I had seen of it online and then I went into it and it had a great plot like Pierce Brown is such a great plot writer but the characters were so weak for me in the first book. I felt like everybody felt like an archetype, felt kind of just like a Hunger Games ripoff and just like for adults instead of YA. And in space, the tech was cool, the world was cool, the plot was really good, but it was just like, if I don't care about the characters or they don't feel real, then like, I don't care about your book, you know? That's why I didn't like the first one, but then I gave this one a chance, I don't know why. But I'm so happy I did try again because the characters got so much better in this book. They're still not 100%, you know, I've read stronger characters, but like they're strong enough that in conjunction with the already super strong plot and awesome world of this book that it's now become a favorite series that I am just obsessed with. Literally, my partner told me yesterday, no, today, that I was talking in my sleep, which I don't do. He said that I said, is he a red or a gold? I was literally dreaming about reds and golds. This has sufficiently overtaken my life. All I want to do is read these books 
and find out exactly what happens. Has some of the best action and fighting scenes I've ever read. Yeah, it's hard for me to talk about this book because it is the second book in a series, but it's just, it's totally worth it. It's also just changed my my perspective of how I view high fantasy novels because I'm mostly a romanticy reader or like YA fantasy, YA sci-fi sort of stuff, but this, this book made me realize that with a lot of high fantasy novels, you do just kind of have to give it time. Like book one was meh, but it was so worth it to get through it to get to book two. And it makes me feel braver to undertake some other big series that I've been very interested in reading for a very long time. One of my goals is to pick up Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. <sighs> maybe before the end of the year? I don't know. That's not like a hard deadline or anything. I think I might ask for the book for Christmas because it's really hard to get at the library. It's like always checked out. So I might ask for a copy of that of my own because it's also like an, a thousand page book to kind of just like see what's up because I didn't expect to love this as much as I did and I just am obsessed with it now. Check out my math mug. I've had this mug for so many years. I want to say my brother gave this to me for Christmas when I was like 16 or something, maybe 17, but it's just a bunch of mathematical signs and symbols. And I just think it's so cute and it's one of the only mugs I own. I have this and I have a Zuko mug and I'm obsessed with it. I'm drinking kombucha in there right now. Well, that's it. Those are all the books that I read in October. I am so excited for the books that I'm currently reading in November and I'll probably make a TBR video this week. Thanks for watching the video this far. Make sure to like, leave a comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.